The Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson. Book One On the Edge of the Dark Sea of Darkness. Chapter 40 Betrayal. With a fierce look in his eyes, Poto threw the bundle into the back of the wagon and mounted it without waiting for the boys. They scrambled in as Poto said, Hey, to Danny the cart horse, who whinnied and tore toward Glipwood. Janner's eyes watered in the wind as he watched the sweeping boughs of glipwood trees whiz by. He prayed to the maker that Lily and Naya were still safe. He wondered how they possibly would escape with Naya and Lily if indeed the fangs had overrun the town. He looked up at Poto, at the white hair flying out behind him, bluish now in the moonlight, and felt better. Maybe Poto didn't have a plan, but knowing that his grandfather was with him, even in the face of the fangs of Dang, made Janner feel like he could be more than he was. He drew strength from the old man, like water from a well, and rested in it. And he looked admiringly at Tink, who had found a fang sword among the remains in the wagon and was holding it in two fists, clenching his jaw. Poto reined up the horse where they could see the torchlights among the buildings in the distance. Whoa, daddy boy, easy now, he whispered. He motioned for Tink and Janner to follow and disappeared into the brush beside the road, fast as a thwop. From where they stopped, they could dimly see the lampposts on Main Street, and they could hear a mixture of chatter, laughter, and movement that was oddly familiar. Janner realized with a shudder that the last time he had heard such volume was when the town was full of hundreds and hundreds of visitors to the Dragon Festival. Could there really be that many fangs in Glipwood? Janner grabbed a sword of his own from the wagon. Like the weapons in Ankle Jelly Manor, it was heavier than he expected. He felt his youth and its weight. He tried to look confident for Tink, but his little brother was already moving into the shadows beside the road after Poto. All right, lads, Poto whispered from a leafy cover. Listen up. I need you to be men, do you hear? They both nodded. There's strong blood in your veins, and if you trust me and let the maker guide you, you might live to see the sun lift this morning. I'm making this up as I go. So you follow me close and do as I say. No questions. If we get separated, then we'll meet at a place called Ankle Jelly Manor. Janner and Tink instinctively glanced northward. Poto raised an eyebrow. I see you know what I'm talking about. And you've probably been there from the look of it. Janner looked down. Humph! There's a lot that we need to talk about when this all blows over, I reckon. But don't you fret about it now. You know I love you boys. And I love your mother and sister, too. Besides, they're a right bit prettier than you louses. So we've got to get them back here? We're gonna get them and make like mad for Ankle Jelly Manor. Other than that, we'll just see how the leaves fall. You clear? Yes, sir, the brothers said in unison. Without a word, Poto again vanished into the shadows. Janner and Tink followed through the gardens and fields behind the buildings facing Main Street. They hopped a fence, and Janner was again surprised at Poto's nimble speed. They halted between two buildings and had their first clear glimpse of the street. Fangs were everywhere. Some stood in formation while a ranking officer bellowed orders at them. Others milled about drunkenly, laughing or fighting with one another. Some sat and dozed in the very alley they were looking through, only a stone's throw away. It was clear that the fangs had just arrived and were out of order. Janner's pulse quickened, and he felt the danger anew. One noise, one fang looking in the wrong direction at the wrong time, and they would be found out, caught like flabbits in a snare. Two fences ahead lay the field behind Oscar's shop. Poto vaulted over another fence and beckoned the boys on. The last looked down the alleyway to be sure no fang was watching. Tink and Janner followed. They made it to Oscar's yard without incident and hunkered down with their backs to the trunk of a fat tree. Poto peeked around the tree while the brothers fought to catch their breath and calm their nerves. Doster's door is open and the lantern is still burning inside, he whispered. I can't see other than that. We ought to be able to make a run for the rear of the building. Then it's just a matter of sneaking around the corner and through the door. You lads ready? The bright moon made the open distance across the building precarious. 
There were even more things loitering in front of and between Farina's flower shop and books and crannies than there were in the first alley. Poto didn't wait. With another glance down the alley, he dashed across to the building. Janner took a deep breath and set to go. But just as he took his first step, Tink jerked him back behind the tree. A fang lumbered toward them along the side of the building. Janner and Tink held their breath and clutched their swords, their backs to the tree. But the fang lost interest in whatever he was doing, and his footsteps receded. Janner snuck another peek and saw that the way was clear. They sprinted to the safety of the shadows at the rear of Books and Crannies. Poto nodded at his grandsons with a proud wink. He looked around the corner and down the alley. After a few seconds, he motioned for the boys to follow. With a last deep breath, they turned the corner and darted through Oscar's back door. Poto's growl told Janner that his mother and sister had been captured. The trap door stood open and black like an empty grave. Poto stood over the hole, breathing hard and rumbling in a way that made Janner fear he might actually explode. I'm sorry, came a weak voice from behind them. They whipped around to see Oscar Henry Teep lying on the floor beside his desk with a bleeding wound in his chest. He was pallid and feeble, his glasses hanging askew on his round face. He coughed. Poto knelt at Oscar's side and grabbed his limp hand. What happened? Poto gently pushed a damp swath of Oscar's stringy hair out of the old man's eyes. Zozab betrayed us. In the words of Chunk, Oscar breathed, I should have known. Poto bowed his head, half in rage, half in sorrow. He signaled to Lamardron with his whistle during the battle. Janna remembered the shrill sound they'd heard just after Commander Norm died. Oscar winced and coughed again. Only another ridge runner could have heard it at that distance. In all these years, he's been watching, spying. He only stopped the black carriage with his sling so that we would think he had, we had more time. But he saved us with the rocks in the alley, Tink said. Yes, he did, because he suspected. Oscar's eyes drooped and his voice broke. Suspected what, Jenner thought. How do you know all of this? Poto asked, his rage getting the better part of his sadness. Zozab told me, Oscar rasped. He told me after the fangs took Naya and Lily. He left right when where you're kneeling now, and he told me everything. Oscar faded with every breath. I'm sorry, old friend. The jewels, keep them with you. Hold fast to them. Die will. By the maker, I will. Poto said, squeezing Oscar's limp hand. Oscar's eyes widened and focused on something above and behind Poto. Janner looked up in time to see Zozab vanishing into the labyrinth of bookshelves. It's him! Janner cried. With a roar, Poto bounded after Zozab, books toppling over in every direction. Janner! Tink! Listen! Oscar said weakly. They bent over the old fellow and strained to hear him over Poto's mad search for the Ridge Runner. Oscar gripped Janner's arm. It's too late. He's too fast. In a matter of seconds, Zozab will have already informed the fangs that you're here. You have to go now. Run! Run! Janner's heart broke for his mentor. He couldn't imagine leaving him to die, leaving Poto to be captured by the fangs, or leaving Lily and his mother to whatever fate Nag had for them. His mind was a flurry of memories of old Mr. Ratip, who had taught him to love books, who had given him his first journal. Tink stood quietly behind Janner and bowed his head. Run! Oscar breathed, his weak eyes pleading with them. Choking back tears, Janner turned to go and collided with the hulking, smelly body of a fang. The Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson Book One, On the Edge of the Dark Sea of Darkness. Chapter 41, A Rumble and a Screech. It was as if Janner had run into a blur of hissing, claws, teeth, and pain. He felt his wrist tied, then the world turned upside down as he first was shoved to the ground and then jerked to his arms and feet by cold hands. He could hear Tink screaming. But all Janner saw was a sea of scaly faces and black, red-rimmed eyes. 
He felt the flick of forked tongues and smelled the rot of fang flesh. The air was full of howling and snarling. Then he realized that the sound was coming not just from the fangs, but from someone else, too. He strained his neck to see out Books and Cranny's front window, where his grandfather's white hair whipped about in the center of a circle of fangs. Poto was in the middle of the street, waving a sword and keeping a host of surrounding fangs at bay. The fangs seemed to be enjoying it, cackling and jabbing at him with the butts of their spears. Janner was carried outside and thrown to the ground, relieved to find Tink, Lily, and Naya lying beside him. The sense of comfort at their presence, even in a sea of evil, was more than his heart could take, and he cried. Janner wished his hands were unbound, not so he could run, but so that he could embrace the ones he loved. Then, without warning, Naya was jerked from the ground. Enough, or the woman dies! Paul the leaf fang, who appeared to be in command. He lifted up Naya by her waist and drew his sword. Photo's fury disappeared like the snuffing of a candle. He looked across the sea of scaly heads at his daughter, and his bushy eyebrows trembled. The only sound was of the old pirate's heavy breathing. At his feet lay several dead, already decomposing fangs. No! Photo breathed, his voice cracking. Lay down your sword, then, old man, or say goodbye to the woman. Photo, full of sorrow, looked long at his daughter. Naya was silent, her jaw set and her eyes closed. General Crack, one of the fangs said. Not now, you fool, said Crack, lowering his voice. Can't you see I'm lifting this human? This is harder than it looks. Naya, girl, are you okay? Photo called. General Crack, the lesser fang repeated. Silent swim! Crack snarled. Yes, Papa, Naya said. Photo's face softened. He lifted his sword above his head in a gesture of submission, about to lay down his arms. General Crack! What? Crack said and he turned on the soldier as he dropped Naya to the ground again. Something coming, sir! Eh? Something coming this way! Look! The fang pointed. Crack looked, and every eye in Glipwood followed. Something certainly was coming. A speeding, bounding shadow across the field, and no one had the slightest notion what it was. But it was big and in the light of the fat moon they could see that someone was riding it. Two sounds split the air and sent a shiver of panic through the whole regiment of fangs. A rumble like the explosion of close thunder, together with the soaring cry of a bird of prey, crashed over the fangs of Dang like a mighty wave. Poto's jaw went slack at the sight before him. Pete the Sock Man, arms wide and talons bared, was riding on the back of a giant black dog the size of a horse. What in the deep? Poto breathed. The last Poto had seen of Nugget was a motionless mangle of fur with a spear run through his side near the cottage where they'd first been captured. The beast that bounded toward him, however, was like nothing he'd ever seen. Thirty fangs were flattened to the ground like weeds in the wind when Pete and the giant nugget creature slammed into them. The fangs were so transfixed by the huge black thing in their midst that Poto was able to push his way through in an instant to the children and Naya. Even Crack was immobile, gawking at the wild-haired sock man who was tearing into his army with talons and a giant dog. Crawl, Poto said. That'll cut you loose when we're clear of the fangs! They wriggled and wormed their way between hundreds of fang legs while the soldiers emerged from their surprise and began to attack, began an attack on the beast and its rider. By the time General Crack noticed they were gone, the Igvies were climbing into the wagon at the edge of town, giddy at the very breath in their lungs. Hodo turned the wagon north toward Ankle Jelly Manor and urged Danny the cart horse. Like lightning, Danny boy! What was that, Grandpa? Jenner asked as they jostled north past the Blagus estate. Was that Pete doing all the screaming? Tink asked. Die! Poto called back from the front of the wagon. What was the other noise? Jenner asked. The growling, I mean. Poto hooted and slapped his knee. Lily girl! He called over his shoulder. 
You ready for this? Photo turned and leaned close to Lily's face. He took her chin in his old, old gnarled hand. It was Nugget! That little dog of yours is alive! Die, and he may be more than that! Lily's face was a perfect picture of wonder. Tears rose to her wide eyes, and her mouth hung open and begged to smile. But how? All those fangs! How can you be sure he's alive? She asked, feeling deep inside her that what Poto said was true. The deep roar she'd heard that sounded wonderfully familiar to her. Janner smiled, happy to hear that Lily's strong voice had come back to her. Oh, I'm sure Nugget's fine, Poto said laughing. There's not much a fine could do to him now, I tell ye. Wait and see, lass. I reckon Nugget will pick up our trail and be with you shortly. As Danny the cart horse pulled the wagon along at a trot, the Igby children began to fear the weariness of their travails. So much had happened since they had followed Pete the Sock Man to his treehouse in the forest, and it didn't appear that any rest was in sight. Lily leaned on Janner and was soon fast asleep. He put an arm around her, then felt a weight on his other shoulder. Tink had fallen asleep, too, his head unconsciously resting on his brother. Janner thought with a smile how horrified Tink would be to know that he had snuggled up to his big brother. Naya leaned forward and kissed Janner on the head. As they climbed the long, steady slope north, away from Glipwood and the cliffs over the dark sea of darkness, they could see the warm lights of the town's street lamps twinkling in the distance, an irony in light of the evil that swarmed the streets there. Janner said a silent prayer for Oscar, then for Pete, who had once again swooped in out of darkness and saved their lives when all was lost. Janner wondered why Poto hated him so much. What secret history did they have, and how could Poto not replace that anger with gratitude when Pete had not once but three times rescued them? Mama? Janner could stand, it no, could stand no more silence. Hmm? Where will we go? Naya looked troubled. She brushed at her dress and looked up at the moon. I really don't know, son. The ice prairies for now. Oscar told us that the fangs are sluggish in the cold and they avoid it when they can. He told us there's an outpost of rebels there who would drive the fangs back across the dark sea, the sea to Dang. Oscar said he knew some of them, so your grandfather plans to seek refuge there. But getting there... Is it far? Very far. But we first need to live through this night. Don't worry, your grandfather has a plan. Naya laughed, a welcome sound in the dark. Or at least he's in the process of making up one. Naya stroked Janner's head. You should rest your eyes now. We won't be there for a little while yet. His mother's voice soothed Janner and his eyes drooped. A thumping in the darkness behind the wagon startled Janner awake. He braced himself as a dark shape approached the wagon, moving faster than a horse at full gallop. Poto, hearing Janner's gasp, raised his sword in one hand and held the reins in the other. But when he saw in the moonlight what was approaching, his manner lightened, and to Janner's surprise, he reined up Danny the cart horse. The wagon stopped, and Lily and Tink stretched and rubbed their eyes. A black shadow bounded toward them a shadow oddly familiar to Janner. Astride it and covered in dark patches of green fang blood was the white-haired, lanky figure of Pete the Sock Man. With sleepy eyes, Lily peered into the moonlit night, trying to understand what she was seeing. She leaned over the edge of the wagon as the dark creature approached, and Poto climbed down with, an o with open arms. The creature let out a deep, happy noise, like a bark, only much, much larger. Nugget, lad! Poto said, reaching up to scratch the creature behind a big floppy ear. Lily's eyes widened, unbelieving. Pete slid off Nugget's back, slinking away from Poto, who hadn't even acknowledged the sock man's presence. Nugget? Lily ventured timidly, afraid to believe this was really him. The giant dog yipped, if it could be called that, as it was a sound that shook the air and made birds scatter half a mile away. Lily let out a happy squeal and tumbled out of the wagon. She crumpled to the ground, forgetting in her elation that she only had one good leg. Nugget bounded over to her and set to licking her with a tongue nearly as big as she was. She squealed with delight and disbelief. She was sure she had seen a fang kill her dearest companion, and now he was alive and as big as a horse. 
Nugget crouched his bulk low on the ground, and Lily laughed as she climbed onto his back. She sat astride her dog, burying her hands deep in his soft fur. Nugget stood there panting, tail as long as a broomstick, and wagging dangerously. From the tall grass several paces away, Pete the Sock Man cleared his throat. Janner wanted to run to the strange man and hug him, but he was wary of it. Poto had made it plain that Pete was to stay clear of the children, and Janner was afraid of bringing more of his grandfather's wrath down on the poor man. He was also unsure of the lethal talons that served as Pete's hands. Had Lily not been so enraptured with Nugget, she would have reached out to him with her typical compassion and typical disregard of Poto's gruffness. But as it was, the family stood in a cluster around the giant dog, and Pete stood alone. Pete? Janner asked with a cautious glance at Poto. How did Nugget get so big? How was it he came back to life? Nuggy and I made it out, Pete said, ignoring the question. But only barely, Boneway. The snakes, they're coming, coming fast. You've got to hide the pules, Jodo. Jules, Poto. You can't let them fall to the fang. Don't tell me what I've got to do, Poto growled. The children were startled. Even Nugget whined and buried his face under his giant paws. I reckon I know how to keep things safe better than you. Father, Naya said, placing a hand on Poto's arm. He glared at his daughter and seemed about to retort, but with a great will he held his tongue and stomped away to the wagon. So the jewels are here somewhere, Janner thought. He tried to imagine what the jewels were and whether or not they were wrapped in the bundle Poto had brought with him out of the cottage, the bundle lying in the wagon just behind his grandfather. Back in the wagon, Poto said, trying to speak calmly. Somebody's led the fangs right to us. He seemed to shame at the unfairness of his own remark. Uh, either way, we've got to get a move on. The manor is just ahead, and it's our only hope of making it to morning. Now listen. Ye children are gonna wait inside while I try to find the weapons Oscar told me about. He never had a chance to give me the map. He looked back down toward the glow of town when he had la where he had last seen his old friend. We know where they are, Grandpa, Tink said. Do you now? Poto said, his eyes narrowing. You boys have been right busy, I'd say. Tink started to respond, but Poto cut him off with a quick cut of his hand. A fang silhouette appeared in the moonlight over a rise, not an arrow shot away. Here they are! The fang cried. Pete the Sock Man lost no time. He shrieked and bolted across the meadow toward the evil lizard. The fang scurried off, waving its arms and yelling to the rest of the soldiers that he had found their quarry. Onto the wagon! Onto the wagon! Now! Poto commanded. Naya and the boys clambered onto the back, and Poto snapped Danny into motion. Lily clung to Nugget's neck as he galloped along beside Danny the cart horse, who was quite unsure about the happy beast beside him.